Hello YouTubers, um, this video is going to be about rocket stove combustion and heat exchanger coils. The part that about the uh, combustion is we're going to examine the reason rocket stoves get such a clean burn. And um, we want to examine these principles to understand them so we can be able to uh, apply those principles or, or in an attempt to apply those principles in uh, a larger uh, stove or can we get that burn out of another stove well if we examine those principles of why we get that good burn out of the rocket stove perhaps we can apply those principles to any stove and get that to burn better um, fire if you're a fireman you will uh, come to understand that fire uh, they call it a pyramid and it's got heat fuel and oxygen to it and without heat, fuel, or oxygen, uh, a fire simply does not exist. If you take the oxygen away from a fire, the fire goes out. If you take the fuel that is supplying uh, the, uh, the combustion, obviously the fire goes out. If you take the heat away from a fire, a fire also goes out. So, I've kind of, oxygen, when applying to a stove, not just the fire, would have some different aspects. And uh, so that would, in those different aspects, if there's different things that would affect combustion, would be the percent of oxygen that's in the air coming into the stove. Well, that's just air temp, you know, regular air, but still that, that is a factor. Uh, the speed at which it enters the stove, uh, the temperature of that air upon entering the stove. Um, will make a difference. Cold air is more dense than hot air. Okay? So it, it makes a difference. The speed out of the air, which is, would be the exhaust, the speed in would be how fast it's coming into the stove, and obviously the speed out, and it would even be a speed of how fast it's traveling over the combustion, right? As a, over the combustion process itself. Well, in the vacuum that's going on, and that is a Venturi vacuum. Um, all automobiles have a Venturi vacuum. If you study pa Paul Pantone's GEEP process, you'll understand that, uh, you know, that uh, that vacuum really accelerates that air, which affects that speed. In heat, uh, you've got some things in the stove that would apply, and that's your heat loss because if you've got a stove, uh, for instance, the reason, one of the reasons that a rocket stove gets a good burn is because it holds the heat. It's got all that fire brick down there insulating it. It doesn't give it away in comparison to a metal box setting into a room quickly and easily radiating out that heat. So one of the principles that cause a rocket stove to get a better burn is that it doesn't have the heat loss. It keeps that heat up at a temperature to combust those things. One of the also the ob, uh, obvious uh, aspects that gets a good burn from a rocket stove is how it's designed. Where if you read uh, Ian's book, that this is a little bit smaller than this and a little bit smaller than this, and they're setting up a vacuum as well, or intending to set it up a vacuum to increase this increase this speed here. So that is also another reason why the uh, rocket stove gets a good good burn. So it's the speed of the air going over. And the whole, really, the deal about a rocket stove, it is a very fast and intense burn. It's a quick burn designed to be stored. Okay. All right. Uh, in fuel. Well, things in fuels and stoves, you search, of course, BTUs per unit, which we'll just consider wood, unless you're drip feeding oil or something else. Now, the flash point of those fuels and the auto combustion point of those fuels. Why is that important? Why is that relevant? Well, <clears throat> flash point is not the temperature which something catches on fire. Flash point is the point at where a material starts giving off of gas that has a lower auto combustion point than the material itself did originally. So like gasoline has a uh, flash point of 32 degrees. Anything over 32 degrees, gasoline is releasing a vapor, 
and that vapor has a lower auto combustion point than the gasoline itself. Therefore, its flash point is 32 degrees. Uh, the reason that's important is in your gases and getting your gases to burn, right? So uh, you got to have your heat inappropriate with your fuel flash point to get it to release those gases. So the flash point, so in the early stages of the stove, when you're trying to get the gas to release, you're trying to have uh, low uh, wind, high release of gases, right? And then when you get into your second burn, you want to have high wind and burn those second gases completely, right? So uh, in any of these, vortex can be done. So this happens once in, in the first stage, in the initial part right here in the rocket stove, and then it happens again, this all happens again, and has all these variables again up here as the gas is set on fire, or if you're reintroducing air into that area, such as a can and can rocket stove, you got these little holes on the side where air is reintroduced and you've got a flame down here, there's smoke, the blue dots represent the smoke, and the smoke combines with the reintroduced air, it still has enough heat that it catches on fire and burns again, right? So there's this triangle going on in this initial stage, and there's this triangle going on with these variables in this second stage. And the way you want these variables to play in the first stage is not necessarily how you want it to play in the second stage, because here you want to burn pretty good, but if you look at uh, Trying Too Hard's video, and he's uh, got a low burn uh, initially, uh, and then he's trying to burn up all of this stuff. And that's, that's not a bad idea. So, so let's look at the, some of the different characteristics of what you want on initial burn versus what you want on uh, your secondary burn. So your initial burn here, it, now not necessarily, and this is not in a rocket stove, okay? Because this is not how it wants to, is in a rocket stove. This is just one way it could be. And the question is, is can you set up a traditional wood stove with these aspects in order to maximize its efficiency. So the initial burn would be low air, medium to high heat, so you just need enough heat to get it to release the gases. You just need enough uh, air. You want the gas to be dense and thick. You don't want it to be spread out. So low air keeps your gas thick, right? You want it to be high off gas situation. You want to be releasing your gases. And you want to lose your immediate radiant heat there. So your initial burn of your wood stove, if this is your wood stove, your initial burn right here needs to be where your radiant heat's coming off. This is radiating out to your room, right? If this was a secondary stage, then that needs to be more insulated because you want to keep that insulated because that secondary burn, you want it to be clean and you want it to be low heat loss. You want it to be low heat loss so it is clean you want it to be that to be, you don't want it to be vented into the room, you want it to be directed to your storage. And you want plenty of oxygen in order to make sure that it's completely burnt, right? Uh, and again, in anywhere in this, you can use the Venturi vacuum or the vortex principles to aid in these processes. Um, Now, so this, this would be one stage of a, of a stove, of any stove you try to design. Then you got a secondary stove, which you're trying to burn clean. We went over those aspects. And then there's a third, and that would be the exhaust. I should put that in a box, because then that would be the exhaust. And the exhaust is going to be the temperature of the exhaust, the angle of descent, the insulation, and the length of the distance as the exhaust is traveling. So these are all things that go into um, making the rocket stove burn as clean as it does. And if we can understand uh, these principles and then apply them to any stove, that we, we ought to be able to build more efficient stoves. Um, one other thing that I uh, wanted to go over and, and mention, um, I had often thought 
because of this can and can style, I'd often thought about on a traditional rocket stove having an air intake down low and a pipe curling in and letting air in. And I don't know at what level on this pipe that I would come in here and let some air, some fresh air back in. The reason I would have it low coming up to a higher is to avoid it from smoking out the opposite way. Right? You don't want that to happen. You don't want it to have any draft. So if you come from a low and come up and curl that in here on this pipe anywhere, I wonder now not only if you if you come into this pipe, what if you come into that pipe at an angle so that so that vortex up and actually form that vortex there. So I've thought about what it would be like reintroducing air into that somewhere in some way because I see how the can and can rocket stove reintroduces the air and it burns so well and that's causing the gasification. So my question is could the rocket stove even be better with introducing some more air and getting even more complete combustion. So whatever waste we're getting in the rocket stove now, is it because we don't have enough heat? I don't think so because you're storing a lot. I think here the only I think it could stand to be improved or possibly be improved just based upon that's really that air there is probably the only thing that's limited for being that keeping that combustion from being uh, absolutely complete. Okay. Uh, last thing I wanted to go over was uh, heat exchangers and coals and, and, and drafting uh, principles. Uh, if uh, I think I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to adjust the camera here a second. <clears throat> Okay, I don't know, oh, sorry. I'm doing this by myself here. All right. Uh, so this is just a barrel stove or whatever kind of stove you want to call it, represented as wood stove of any kind. Uh, some, some, some help for you guys. How many coils do you put on a, uh, how many coils do you put around your, your stack there? How do you know how to keep it? where it needs to be so it will vent? Well, that's, that's a good question. It's very, it's a good print. It applies here, what, you know, and it applies on any stove you're thinking or can, can conceive. And that is, what's the temperature of your exhaust stack? Because that temperature is what's going to cause your draw. Now, if you're shooting this temperature above your coil here and you're getting below 95 degrees to 100 degrees, you're not going to have much draw at all. So one way you can tune your coil, if you don't have any idea, is you can do a bunch of turns. You can put your fire in it that's an average size burn at what you're, you think you're going to be burning on any average day, right? And get it fired up, run your water, and check your temperature above your stack above your, or check the temperature of your stack above your coil to see if you're maintaining that stack at 95 to 100 degrees. If you're getting below 95 to 100 degrees, you're going to backdraft. If that temperature, now if that temperature gets too different from this temperature right here, this is the gate, or this is the door here open, the smoke will roll out here. If this temperature gets higher than this temperature, it will actually cause the reverse draft and it will smoke out your door. Right? That's what that's caused. Or if it's over here, it'll cause smoke out into here. Now, another problem with any stove is that they're sucking air in. Right? They're sucking air in right there. And they're blowing that out of chimney. Well, out the chimney is outside of the house. So if you have a well sealed up, well cracked sealed house, and you got a fire that is actually a fan trying to blow to the outside. That air is trying to blow to the outside, but it's having a hard time sucking that extra air into the house. So that's going to limit your exhaust as well because it can't blow air out that it can't suck in. Out must equal in. That why, that's the reason secondary air in a stove is so, or outside secondary air or supplemental fan driven secondary air is so critical or so important or so widely used at least in stoves. So <clears throat> that's one coil type and if you do a coil like this you should have your gravity feeding from the top 
and your pressure of your heat pushing back from the bottom. That way you've got your hot and cold flowing in different directions. Okay? But you're limited to getting your, this down. Now, there's another type of coil that's available for these stoves, and it's just a single loop. It's probably an inch and a half, and it's good to like, oh, 150 to 200 gallon tank. And it's just a single loop, and it doesn't rob as much. It's still in here, and it still robs some heat from the fire, but it doesn't rob as much. But it's just another option instead of putting this directly on your stack, if you're having, or if you want to create a stove that doesn't have it potential draft problems. Now there's one other type of coil that I've uh, seen and, and built a couple and that's just a simple copper coil. You can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, one of the big box stores and just buy a roll of copper. And it's already cooled up. Well it's beautiful. There's no sense in trying to bend that and wrap it around your pipe. You can just take that coil and you get you a, a stainless steel dog bowl you get a stainless steel dog bowl and it's big enough to lay that coil of copper in, drill two holes and bring that out for an input and an output and then take plaster of Paris that you can also buy at the box stores and pour that dog bowl or large metal pan, right, stainless pan full of plaster of Paris, right. So what you've got is, is just a, a bowl with a coal in it and then a the plaster of Paris and the plaster of Paris will take the heat. And then if it's nice and round, if you've got a drum, you can just put that right on the back end of your drum here. And it makes a nice, clean finish. Really clean finish. You don't have the uh, coils around the stack. And you're not robbing directly from this. Okay? So, uh, yeah. So that is some of the principles. And... Uh, don't forget that any of these points, there's ways to get that air to vortex and twist coming in. There's ways to add air coming in. Uh, there's ways to get that air to twist going out, uh, which is vortex, right? You can get the vortex out, uh, which uh, I would make the assertion when you get it to vortex, you will actually have a better burn, cleaner burn. Now, I've got a, I've got a question <clears throat> that uh, I don't know if somebody out there can answer. All these information that we've had for uh, BTUs for different materials that we've had uh, available to us for a long time, and for example, the a piece of hardwood at less than 10% moisture you know, has so many BTUs in it. Uh, I wonder how that BTU rating was established. Uh, what, burn, how, what type of burn did they use to establish that? And secondly, since that's been established, have any of these combustion concepts that man's come up with over the next two, three, last two, three hundred years or th two, three thousand years, uh, does that affect that? I don't know. I'm going to be looking into that. And how, how, how has it affected? How much has it affected? Because surely there's a different amount of BTUs coming out of a piece of wood in one stove than the other, so the BTU rating that was in a piece of wood would definitely be affected by the, the measurement or how the process of that they got that out of there. Uh, so, yeah. So you got a secondary burn, and you got a first. The first one, you just want it to off gas. The second one, you want it to burn completely and have lots of air. Uh, I hope this helps you guys and your uh, concepts and your ideas. Uh, thanks for watching.